You are given two beakers, A that can contain 5 milliliters of water and B 7 milliliters of water. There are no scale marks on the beakers, so the only volumes you can measure directly are 5 and 7 milliliters by completely filling the beakers. The question is, with just these two beakers, can you measure precisely 1 milliliter of water? So let's follow our intuition and have a goal. Let's track the total amount of water in the two beakers. Where do we start? Initially, both beakers are empty, so let's write 0 plus 0 is 0. Let's start by filling in B first, so we get 7 milliliters in B and 0 milliliters in A. 0 plus 7 is 7. And let's say we transfer 5 milliliters of water to fill up A, leaving 2 in B. 5 plus 2 is 7. Now, obviously transferring the water from A back to B does no good as it's reversing what we had just done. Emptying B does no good either, therefore let's empty A. 0 plus 2 is 2. After emptying A, let's transfer the 2 milliliters of water to A. 2 plus 0 is 0. And to repeat the process, we fill up B again. 2 plus 7 is 9. Again, not filling in A or emptying either A or B does not seem to do any good, so let's fill A with the water in B. Noticing there are 3 milliliters space left in A, so we get 5 plus 4 is 9. And empty A, 0 plus 4 is 4. Transfer 4 milliliters from B to A, 4 plus 0 is 4. Fill up B, 4 plus 7 is 11. Transfer 1 milliliter from B to A, 5 plus 6 is 11. Empty A, 0 plus 6 is 6. Transfer 5 milliliters of water from B to A, 5 plus 1 is 6. And finally, empty A, we're left with 1 milliliter of water in B, which is exactly what we had wanted. Gladly, we bumped our way to a conclusion. But how do we interpret what we had done, and how exactly does this 1 milliliter of water come? Let's look at the problem again. And this time, let's focus on the total amount of water in the two beakers after each action we take. We saw in our solution that we only take the following three actions. 1. Fill up B from empty. 2. Transfer as much water as possible from B to A. And 3. If A is full, we empty all water in A. That being said, the total volume of water in the two beakers, after each action we take, must either increase by 7, if we fill up B, or remains unchanged, if we transfer water from B to A, or decrease by 5, if we empty A. And if we look at our track sheet, we indeed filled up B, transferred water, emptied A, transferred water, filled up B, transferred water, empty A, transferred water, filled up B, transferred water, empty A, transferred water, and finally emptied A. Overall, we filled up B thrice and emptied A for four times. And as a result, the net water we had gained is 3 times 7 minus 4 times 5 equal to 1 milliliter. As can be easily generalized, to measure 1 milliliter of water with beakers of size A and B milliliters, we need to find two non-negative integers x and y, those like 0, 1, 2, 3, and etc. that satisfy the equation x times A minus y times B is equal to 1. We need to add A milliliters of water for x times to the system and remove B milliliters of water for y times from the system to obtain a final total amount of 1 milliliter of water. Because all the numbers here of interest be it a or b or x or y related to this equation, are integers. This equation has been given a cool name, linear Diophantine equation. For example, given two beakers, a of size 3 and b of size 5, we have the linear Diophantine equation, x times 3 minus y times 5 is equal to 1. Noting 2 times 3 minus 5 is equal to 1, this linear Diophantine equation has a solution. In specific, it tells us filling in a twice and emptying B once will give us 1 milliliter. Also, noting 2 times 5 minus 3 times 3 is also equal to 1, we know filling in B twice and emptying A thrice should give 1 milliliter as well. So this linear Diophantine equation has more than one solution. We had explored how solutions to linear Diophantine equation can solve our measuring problem. But do measuring problems like this always have a solution? In fact, no. It's not always the case that we can find such integers to satisfy the Diophantine equation. For example, if you're given two beakers of size 6 and 3, you cannot measure 1 milliliter of water no matter how hard you try. With A equals to 6 and B equals 3 in the Diophantine equation, we have x times 6 minus y times 3 is equal to 1. But there are no integers x and y that satisfy this equation. Since the left-hand side of the equation is always a multiple of 3, 
but the right-hand side one is not. Indeed, whichever step you take, the volume of water in the two beakers in total is a multiple of three, impossible to be one milliliter. So, what combinations of beakers allow us to measure one milliliter, and when not? To address this question, let me introduce two concepts: greatest common divisor, abbreviated as GCD, and co-prime, and also a lemma called Bizeaux's lemma. For positive integers a and b, the greatest common divisor is the largest positive integer c that a and b are both a multiple of. We denote the greatest common divisor of a and b as GCD of a and b bracket. If GCD of a b is equal to one, we say a and b are co-prime. Otherwise, we say they're not co-prime. For example, five is a multiple of one and five, but not a multiple of two, three, or four. And seven is a multiple of one and seven, but not a multiple of two, three, four, five, or six. The largest positive integer that five and seven are both a multiple of is one. So the greatest common divisor of five and seven is one. Five and seven are thus co-prime. Another example: six is a multiple of one, two, three, and six, but not a multiple of four or five. And three is a multiple of one and three, but not a multiple of two. The largest positive integer that six and three are both a multiple of is three. The greatest common divisor of six and three is three. Six and three are thus not co-prime. Bezout's lemma then suggests that if two given integers a and b are co-prime, that is, their greatest common divisor is equal to one, then there exists integers x and y that satisfy the linear Diophantine equation. X times a minus y times b is equal to one, so the measuring problem is solvable. In other words, the measuring problem has a solution only if the greatest common divisor of a and b is equal to one. Let's view this statement via some examples. With two beakers of size twelve and nine, because the greatest common divisor of twelve and nine is three, one can only measure volume of water that is a multiple of three, and it's impossible to measure one milliliter of water. With two beakers of size twelve and seven, because the greatest common divisor of twelve and seven is one, by Bezout's lemma, it's possible to measure one milliliter of water. In specific, by noting three times twelve minus five times seven is equal to one, we need to fill in the twelve milliliter beaker thrice, empty the seven milliliter beaker five times to obtain one milliliter. There are other quite interesting applications of the greatest common divisor. Ever since thousands of years ago. The Chinese had adopted a special chronology called sexagenary cycle, different from how years are numbered now, 2021, 2022, and so on. Sexagenary cycle gives each year a special name by joining two Chinese characters from the two lists. The first list composes of ten characters representing first, second, third, etc. The second list composes of twelve characters, more commonly known as their corresponding twelve zodiac animals. Rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig. We can make a ten by twelve table with these characters. Last year, 2021 is 辛丑 year, and this year, 2022 is 壬寅 year. Each year, the next character from each list is drawn, so we always move to the down right diagonal grid. When we finish a list and reach the boundary of the table. We go around and start from the beginning of that list again. There seems to be a combination of 120 years with this table, but in fact there are only 60 years in a cycle, as suggested by the name sexagenary cycle. By coloring the years that follow, we see only half of the grids are filled. Why is this happening? Let's label the years by summing the orders of the components of his name. For example, year 2021, 辛丑 Composes of Xin with order eight and Chou of order two, so eight plus two is ten. Year 2022, Ren Yin composes of Ren with order nine and Yin of order three, so nine plus three is twelve, and so on. We notice for every year its label is an even number. Even if we had wrapped around the boundaries of that table, it's still an even number. However, only half of the table are even grids, and the rest are odd grids. Hence, only half the grids can be occupied. It's quite similar to what's happening in the measuring problem. 
The greatest common divisor of ten and twelve is two, so that only the even grids, those that are multiples of two, can be reached, not the odd ones. Therefore, only half the grids are covered, and there are twelve times ten divided by two equals to sixty years in a cycle. This sixty, in fact, also has a name. It is called the least common multiple of twelve and ten, which we denote. By LCM bracket twelve and ten. If we adopt another chronology, say combining nine English characters with six Greek letters, because the greatest common divisor of nine and six is three, only one third of our chronology table will be covered, wherever we start. As a result, we will get a cycle of nine times six over three is equal to eighteen years. If we had ten English characters with seven Greek letters, because the greatest common divisor of ten and seven is one, one one-th, all of our chronology table will be covered. Wherever we start, we can wrap around the entire table. So this chronology gives us a cycle of seven times ten over one is equal to seventy years. In fact, there is a related theorem called Chinese remainder theorem that addresses such phenomena. Chinese remainder theorem states that for integers a and b, if greatest common divisor of a and b is one, then the product group c a and c b is isomorphic to c a times b. In terms of our calendar, it's basically saying that the a by b chronology table we created can be unwrapped to form one strip of continued years with length a times b only if the greatest common divisor of a and b are one. Let's recap that given any two beakers of integer volumes, even very large ones, say 48 milliliters and 137 milliliters, by noting 137 is a prime number and thus is co-prime with 48, you can tell that they can be used to measure one milliliter for sure in some way, without forming the hundred of steps procedure by hand. Sounds like a cool trick, right? Plus, even if you find using common divisor and stuff to unwrap a calendar not quite persuasive, nor too attractive, perhaps, concepts such as the greatest common divisor, the least common multiples, and etc., still do have lots more interesting applications for you to explore.